so this is continuation of the previous video about circuit breaker this one dedicatedly we are going to see all the questions that we can expect in our interviews so, so the first question is what is a circuit breaker and why is it important in the microservices architecture we saw what circuit breaker is just uh, straight away give the definition how it is helping and why is it important because it helps us to maintain the resiliency and fault tolerance in the microservices architecture it is preventing the cascading failure if something goes wrong in a single microservices we can contain that failure in at a uh, at a limited boundary and we can decide what fallback services are that can uh, that can uh, help to complete the flow that was originated initially so that's what we need to explain in this question can you explain the difference between a closed open and half open state in a circuit breaker i explained that with the diagram uh, in the previous video closed means everything is fine and all the requests will pass through the circuit breaker open means this something is very wrong in the downstream services and uh, whatever call the caller is uh, trying to make circuit breaker will not allow that it will monitor that call that there is a request ha there has been a request on around this one but it will not call the third party but whatever fallback you have put it will respond from there only half open state means uh, that configuration the timing number that we have decided so in if some it is a self healing phase actually of the in half open state it tries to see if the downstream service is healed or not it is responding properly or not in half open state let's say there is a 10 request per minute so it will call some of the requests from there based on the configuration that we have seen how do you determine the appropriate threshold for tripping a circuit breaker so these threshold this is very important like uh, we mentioned uh, failure threshold we mentioned the uh, sliding window uh, whether it is account based or time based we decide number of request uh, we decide like uh, when it is going in the half open state we have to decide when it is going in the half open state right so how to come up with these numbers so the answer of this one like monitoring in the test phase we need to monitor the behavior of the uh, downstream services that we are calling from the r service let's say uh, uh, usually their response time is 20 milliseconds so we will put the uh, we will put the threshold of the timeout in our uh, client service as a 20 millisecond so on an average it should be same like the max uh, uh, timeout it is going and on other requirement like if the client service that is calling on the downstream services if client service has requirement that downstream should response in this minimum this time uh, it, it is must to respond from there like it should not wait continuously so that time out we can put i can give you an example if you have worked in the finance based company there are like network calls between master visa and other uh, finance giants and if they have called your system so they need response within a certain time limit and if you are not responding there is a huge fine that uh, gets imposed on that one so at these places circuit breaker helps a lot in putting a uh, threshold around timeout and if we have seen the usual failure rate that happens like failure can happen uh, of uh, like there can be different kind of failures one is like it is it is not available for a, a certain point of time due to network unavailability uh, and uh, other time can be kind of permanent failure like it is not able to a heal properly in in a uh, like internal server error some exception is there some business failure is there so there is no point in trying so you have to go to manually fix that so the straight away answer of this one like we have to monitor the monetary uh, we have to monitor the services downstream manually and then decide all the configuration that we need to put in our circuit breaker how do you handle fallbacks when a circuit breaker is tripped so we have three huge cases return the cached value return the exception and return any other so if there is a fraud check service we are calling that as failing we can have alternate fraud check service we can call uh, other one so based on the business uh, uh, business use case we decide how to respond if circuit breaker is tripped that fallback mechanism 
How do you ensure that the circuit breakage is performing optimally and not negatively impacting the system? So here, uh, the it is indirectly asking how do you monitor the circuit breaker itself? You cannot go to manually see the calls and all that. So there is a dashboard for everything, right? If you have used Java and uh, like uh, Spring Boot, actuator endpoint is there. So you have to put some configuration. Then your actuator will start giving you the details about the circuit breaker. Right, and uh, there is a Grafana and other micrometer is there. These libraries, if you put it you know, like in your services, they will keep pushing the details of uh, of uh, these circuit breaker calls. And if you have used New Relic, Dynatrace, or any other monitoring tool that you are using, whatever configuration that failure threshold, call permitted, circuit breaker state, all of these we can see in a dashboard. So in those monitoring tools, we create a dashboard and on those dashboards, we can create an alert. So if certain matrix is not proper, create alert and send out a mail or a call something. And accordingly, uh, we can monitor and we can make sure that it is performing optimally. It is not impacting the system negatively because we have to know it is easy to integrate a new system into existing uh, architecture but deciding whether it is helping us or not is a critical thing that will come only when you research that thing no one can teach you uh, every use case in every other company is different you cannot learn it somewhere you can take an examples or something but you have to come up with the data by analyzing your own system that you're working on the next question is can you explain the role of timeouts in a circuit breaker i think we have discussed uh, already what is the timeout uh, role in the circuit breaker what is the relation between uh, circuit breakers and load balancing in a microservices so it is uh, some questions can be tricky as well directly circuit breaker and load balancing there is no relation uh, that does not seem to me any relation you just have to explain the role of the circuit breaker and role of the load balancer in a microservices architecture separately so they need not to be connected that uh, if something goes wrong load balancing how circuit breaker is impacted so they they both of them are like uh, uh, different concepts but they are helping uh, the same thing like uh, scaling fault tolerance both of them are helping in the microservices architecture have you worked with any specific circuit breaker library user frameworks can you explain their advantages and disadvantages so if you're is using spring boot so i hope you have used hystrix also but if you started recently using a spring boot you might be seeing the resilience 4j and other libraries are also there so whatever you have used you just go ahead and look around there is advantages disadvantages how have you used it and what was the like what is the benefit out of uh, when you started using this circuit breaker can you describe a scenario where a circuit breaker helped prevent a system failure in a real world project you worked on so yeah this is the case where you have to analyze your current system and see how circuit breaker helped so if you have to build a hypothetical scenario you can straight away say that your something goes wrong with the third party service that you're calling and uh, it was not responding properly and we put a fallback and it prevented us uh, from uh, failing the entire system so we cached some response and we cached like we limited their boundary whatever uh, error it was because on the third party when we are calling we do not have any control on that how they will respond so circuit breaker is the thing that we have to put a check on that call next one is the can you explain how circuit breakers fit into a larger strategy for ensuring the resilience and stability of the microservices architecture yeah i can explain it so in a big system if one thing is failing and we have to contain that failure in a single boundary it, it you can see related in real time also if there is fire breakout in a area so first thing you decide like you uh, uh, what what you try to contain that boundary you all the uh, all the things all the things that can burn you just try to move that out from there so that that fire is contained in a single boundary and it's uh, its effect is uh, reduced at that only same thing happens here also when we are putting a circuit breaker we are containing that boundary of the cascading failure so and that eventually makes the system stable and resilient to failures right this is now this is very important scenario wise the thing will be if you have understood the circuit breaker properly scenario wise questions are even more easy to answer because interviewer is going to give you the scenario you just have to 
give your answer in couple of lines only so let's see the first scenario you have a microservice that is experiencing experiencing uh, increased error rates due to a network issue the question is how would you configure the circuit breaker for this microservice to prevent cascading failure in the system so you just have to explain about a library that you have used for the configure uh, like to prevent the failures and the, these increased error rates and put a some fallback and like that you can explain as we discussed in the last videos you have a microservice that is experiencing intermittent failures due to a bug in its code how would you configure the circuit breaker to handle this situation so similar we can we are good with this we can do it right a client is calling a microservice that is experiencing high latency so see scenarios are different like it is uh, experiencing increased error rates it is failing uh, like it has intermittent failures like not all the times but sometimes there is a failure and here it has a latency issue how you can configure the circuit breaker to uh, take care of this high latency you microservices uh, your microservice is experiencing a sudden spike in traffic that is causing it to slow down and generate errors how would you configure the circuit breaker to handle this situation we can do that not an issue Imagine that you have a microservice that is critical component of your system and cannot afford any doubt. How do you use circuit breaker in conjunction with other techniques such as redundancy and load balancing to ensure high availability for this microservice? So this question like interviewer is doing like redundancy and load balancing I have to do to make sure that it is there is no downtime. So load balancing like balancing the load redundancy the same service instances we have to put multiple places so that if one is down others can respond to that but here question is focused on the circuit breaker so we have to always ready with the fallback mechanism so if main service is going down what is the fallback that we have to go that is how we can prevent the downtime uh, of uh, entire system right so fallback we already have seen cached response error response or some default mechanism or some any other service that can do the same job that main service was doing the next one is the your microservice architecture includes several microservices that are dependent on each other how would you use circuit breaker to prevent a failure in one microservice from causing a cascading failure throughout the system we have discussed this one uh, in the previous video with the architecture diagram itself you have implemented a circuit breaker in a microservice but it is still experiencing higher rates what additional steps could you take to improve the reliability of the microservice so first thing that you have to monitor your circuit breaker it is high chance that the configuration that you have put for the circuit breaker is incorrect you just have to correct that and it will start working properly so that was it about the questions around circuit breaker uh, i hope it has covered most of the scenarios but as i said it always depends on the project that you are working on and the explanation should relate to that so that you can answer any fo uh, any uh, follow up questions that you are answering because sometimes when you start answering interviewer is observing that answer and follow up questions comes from there only so use your words uh, cautiously uh, try to use the words which you understand properly try, don't try to use the fancy words while answering in the interviews that is the best uh, suggestion that i can give uh, when you are going for the interview you answer do not try to make up the answer interviewer is always going to catch that and that is a very bad impact so because you will put yourself in a trap in the fall for like follow up questions itself so try to be honest and uh, give the honest answer what you understand if you don't know something it is not expected that you know everything if you know 40% 50% and you are explaining that properly that is also more than enough okay thank you thank you for your time guys so see you in some other videos about this